We're going to have something special. Did you want to open Where are we for this? I got a council open. Um, the board at its meeting on November 9 uh, engaged in <coughs> some uh, question of the trustees of the trust funds in relation to the SEC's order of September 3, 2015, which found that there had been fraudulent conduct on the part of Mackinson and Company in connection with their marketing of services uh, to uh, municipalities uh, for their trust funds. And uh, the questions to the trustees of the trust funds focused on uh, what they knew, when they knew it, and what they had done about it. And the answers indicated that uh, once the trustees of the trust funds knew about it, there was very little discussion uh, by them, very little investigation by them, uh, before they took a vote on October 19, 2015, at a meeting where there were very few people in attendance, in which they reaffirmed their relationship with Mackinson and Company. Uh, there was uh, indication on the part of one or two trustees that had they, if they knew that there was a continuing relationship with Warren Mackinson himself, with Mackinson and Company, if he continued to derive income from Mackinson and Company, if he had some managerial relationship with Mackinson and Company, then they might feel differently about the subject. But nevertheless, they indicated they had not made that kind of inquiry. We passed that information along to the Attorney General's office, who have been investigating this not only with regard to Hampton, but with 28 other municipalities uh, who are similarly invested uh, with the investment advisor <coughs> with Mackinson and Company. And uh, the uh, Charitable Trust Division uh, called Mr. Mays <coughs> up to uh, Concord, uh, had questions of him, and answered certainly open questions that we still had after November 9th. And those answers indicated, uh, as they indicate in a letter dated November 20th to all trustees, that Mr. Mackinson uh, has a right to remain on the Mackin and Mackinson and Company Board of Directors until he is completely bought out by Mr. Mays, and the business name cannot be changed during that time mm -hmm. frame. Yeah. And the Attorney General's office in that November 20 letter uh, indicates that uh, individual boards of trustees uh, should separately seek assurances on behalf of their own municipalities about the practices of Mackinson and Company and whether they want to continue to do business with Mackinson and Company. Okay, now in order, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I think we should read this letter. I'll be glad to read it. This is from um, Thomas J. Donovan, Director of Charitable Trust, and it's regarding Mackinson and, Mackinson and Company SEC sanctions order. Dear Trustees, you are no doubt aware that the United States Securities and Exchange Commission issued an administrative order dated September 3rd, 2015 against Mackinson and Company, Inc. and Warren J. Mackinson. This letter is written because we understand that you are trustees of a municipal fund for which Mackinson and Company, Inc. serves as the investment advisor. Neither, neither the charitable trust unit nor any of the municipalities was aware of this proceeding. Even though the SEC investigation commenced in 2012, when we found out about it, we made a referral to the New Hampshire Bureau of Securities Regulation. We also met with David Mays, the president and current owner of Mackinson and Company, together with his lawyer. With respect to municipal trustees, our primary concern at the CTU is that the trustees follow their fiduciary duties and obey relevant New Hampshire statute, statutes. To that end, we offer seminars and written materials. If we believe that trustees are not complying with the statutory requirements or fiduciary duties that, with respect to investments, we will counsel and, if necessary, take action against those trustees. That said, we do not have the jurisdiction to pursue investment managers or investment companies <coughs> that work with municipalities 
or with any other charitable trust. In light of the sanctions, trustees do have a fiduciary responsibility to review their investment relationship with Mackinson and Company. They should look at their returns and perhaps seek a meeting with Mr. Mays. They may also wish to consult with Consul concerning their options, which could include continuing their relationship with Mackinson and Company changing investment advisors and or bringing legal action against the business. We have been concerned with the solvency and continued suitability of the investments that Mackinson and Company uses with municipalities. We asked those questions of Mr. Mays and his lawyer and we were assured that the investments are placed in large mutual fund type products not proprietary to Mackinson and Company. We were told that the funds are all solvent and could easily withstand withdrawals by any or all of the municipalities that have funds invested there. You should all you should separat separately seek those assurances on behalf of your own municipality should you decide to continue to do business with Mackinson and Company. We have also been concerned with the nature of the violations outlined in the order, i.e. that Mackinson and Company and Mr. Mackinson misled m municipalities in promotional material as to the past performance of Mackinson and Company portfolio. That is fraudulent conduct. Municipalities have relied upon those misrepresentations to engage Mackinson and Company. How have the municipalities been harmed by this fraud? It all comes down to money. There are statutory remedies and they focus on losses, including whether a municipality missed out on a higher rate of return with another investment advisor by switching to or staying with Mackinson and Company. That is a fact intensive inquiry and will vary among municipalities. We cannot perform that review. You will need to consult town council on that point and on whether other opportunities for relief may exist. You might also consult the Bureau of Securities Regulation. Finally, we learned something of the continuing relationship between Mr. Mackinson and Mackinson and Company. Mr. Mays bought the business in 2012, shortly before the SEC investigation began. He is paying Mr. Mackinson over time Mr. Mackinson has a right to remain on the Mackinson and Company Board of Directors until he is paid off, and the business name cannot be changed during that time frame. Mr. Mackinson no longer serves in any capacity with the business. As you can imagine, the SEC order must be a source of ongoing discussion between Mr. Mays and Mr. Mackinson. All of this may affect how Mr. Mays decides to continue his business. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Very truly yours, Thomas J. Donovan, Director of Charitable Trust. And uh, as it says, we cannot perform the review. You will need to consult town council on that point on whether other opportunities for relief may exist. And this is our town council. Thanks. Do you want to continue? Yeah, thank you, Rick. Um, it, just the one point, I know you read this, it's a long letter. Mr. Max no longer serves in any other capacity with the business. He is a director, uh, continues to be a director in the business. So the board had charged uh, my office with looking into the facts of the matter, what the trustees knew, when did they know it, what did they do to, to follow up on it. Uh, we've heard from them. We've now heard from the Attorney General's office. Uh, this board has overall <coughs> responsibilities for town financial affairs, uh, including uh, evaluating the, uh, the trustees of the trust fund's performance. Uh, the trustees, by the way, uh, are not apparently going to meet on this subject again until their, their regular quarterly meeting, January 19th, 2016, uh, their agenda is on the town's uh, website under trustees of the trust funds, although uh, Mr. Silberdick mentioned that they would at that time evaluate whether to continue um, 
in aff affiliation with Magnuson and Company as investment advisor, I do not see that particular item on their agenda. Hmm. So uh, I leave that. I was asked to report to the board, and that's my report to the board for your comment and direction. Comments for town council. Mr. Bridal. Where do we move from here? I think this board has the ability to uh, uh, at least voice its concerns to the trustees of the trust funds to urge them, if you wish, to act more quickly on this subject and in a, in a, uh, rather than waiting until the January meeting to, uh, to, it, to at least look into it. Uh, to be uh, this, this letter uh, that was addressed to them did not come to us. This letter, which was issued November 20, went to the trustees but is not on their website and has not been uh, provided to us by the trustees. So they continue not to be forthcoming to this board about what they're doing. And you could uh, certainly voice your feelings about that if you, f if you wished. M Mrs. Walsley. This may be a really stupid question, but it references in the letter that Rick read about a, an individual such as Mr. Mackinson, profiting from still being party to the business in whatever capacity at, as a director. Um, if he is being paid out in segments for his interest in the business, would that constitute being paid a profit? There's a couple of aspects to that. Uh, at one time, Mr. Mackinson owned a percentage share in National Advisors Trust, which are, is the location in which all the money, all Kansas $20 million, dollars, yeah. is invested of, of the trustees of the, that the trustees have. Okay. That's one aspect to look at. Uh, they did not, in fact, the AG's office did not address whether Mr. Mackinson actually is getting some Remuneration. Financial remuneration for being a director. Oh. That's another question to ask. Because that's different from being paid whatever lump sum to sell the business. Correct. Would have been. Yeah. Correct. And, and I would think that the trustees of the trust funds in due diligence would want to ask those questions okay. and meet with Mr. Mays okay. and, uh, in, and respond to this letter in a proactive way. Okay. Mr. That's Bean. All. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, page two of the document um, from Thomas J. Donovan, Director of Charitable Trust, uh, quote, unquote, that is fraudulent conduct. That's Mr. Mackinson, and we don't need to uh, belabor it, former elected official in this town, bookkeeper for the Board of Trustees. Uh, sought this business. Uh, the Security and Exchange Commission has equally said that it's fraudulent conduct. It's fined his firm $100,000. Uh, Mr. Mackinson is profiting as a former elected official in this town for someone that put that business and steered that business while he was a member of that board. He is profiting from fraud as defined by the Director of Charitable Trust in New Hampshire and by the United States government. Security and Exchange Commission. This is a three-year-old problem. It's a five-year-old problem when you go back to um, Mr. Mackinson's tenure as an elected official. The Board of Trustees under Mr. Silberdick uh, really has to uh, start meeting in public. They need their meetings televised. Uh, if somebody can write this down, I'll be prepared to make those motions. They have wide and broad uh, um, uh, authority to do what they want. This is tens of millions of dollars. There's fraud involved, and we are not kept informed. We have never been kept informed. Uh, I doubt we will be kept informed. Uh, I doubt how much the Board of Trustees uh, for the trust funds is informed about what's going on for Mackinson and Company. This, is a huge problem for the town of Hampton. And implicit in any, any business relationship in the town of Hampton is that you don't commit fraud. I would think that's a fairly low bar. 
uh, I would be prepared to make a motion that uh, that be included in any uh, RFP if you've been sanctioned by any uh, government agency, if you've been fined for fraud, that uh, you are not allowed to bid nor continue uh, to provide services of any kind to the town of Hampton. Um, that's just deplorable, and it gives us all a black eye. This falls squarely on the backs of the Board of Trustees and Mr. Silberdick, and we have to do their job. The Security and Exchange Commission has to do their job. Uh, now the Charitable Trust Director and the Attorney General's Office, they have to do Mr. Silberdick's job. And I will tell you, uh, in terms of core competency, uh, this isn't about uh, anything other than Mr. Silberdick's failed leadership uh, to the Town of Hampton with his board. Uh, this letter talks specifically about fiduciary duties and to obey relevant New Hampshire statutes. It says the Director of Charitable Trust will counsel and if necessary takes, take actions against those trustees. You say in paragraph one, two, three, in paragraph four on page one, in light of the sanctions, trustees do have a fiduciary responsibility to review their relationship with Mackinson and company. Now, I don't know what Mr. Silberdick's uh, time hack is for how important he thinks uh, the United States government is, the Security Exchange Commission, the Attorney General's office. I think it's pretty important. And uh, I don't wait a month, and I don't keep it a secret, and I don't keep secrets from the town of Hampton. I don't keep secrets from this board, uh, and secrets are being kept, and fraud's being committed. So they have a fiduciary responsibility, and I would be interested to know um, when Mr. Mackinson or when uh, Mr. Silberdick is going to have his meeting. When will it be televised? When will we get full transparency from this? Because it's going from bad to worse, and uh, um, Mr. Silberdick doesn't run this town. The people in this town run this town. They should look at their returns and perhaps seek in a meeting with Mr. Mays. That point is another point that we want to know from um, Mr. Silberdick and his board. Uh, were our returns, if we had gone with some of these other firms, uh, and it will require some statistical analysis, and Mr. Mays, the new owner of the company, can pay for it because his firm was the one that was committing fraud. And we want to know. Were we disadvantaged, were we left short by this fraud that was committed by this company when they secured that contract while, while this man was on the committee and the bookkeeper and the compliance officer? So that's another point we want. We want to make sure, and if you can make sure this is down here, and I'm going strictly off this letter because there's very implicit and explicit requests for information that we as selectmen of the governing body want to make sure that our taxpayers are understanding and our citizens. So we want to know. We want a, a, a comparison between back in the day, and this is going to take a couple of minutes, Mr. Chairman, when this business was solicited, if we had gone with other firms, and what are the returns? Because as we know, there was a loss this summer of several hundred thousand dollars. And I wonder if some of these other firms that came in here didn't lose several hundred thousand dollars. And then these continued returns were on top of money that Mackinson and company didn't lose this summer. And we don't know the answer to that. They may also wish to consult with counsel concerning their options, which include conti continuing their relationship with Mackinson and company. We, we do want them to consult. And when, when he's talking about that, Esquire, is he talking about you? Yes. Okay. Well, we would be interested in you meeting, I th and I think I can speak for the board on this issue, that we do want you to find out what the heck's going on and why are we continuing with this quagmire. The answer to that particular question is by contract, we, the trustees of the trust funds may disengage with Maxson and company <coughs> with minimal notice. Yeah, well, I think if it's a lot of people at this table, it, that, that minimal notice would have been um, months ago. Again, on the second page, this, this fraudulent conduct. This is the Director of Charitable Trustees' concern with the nature of the violations that were ordered. You may also consult, and I would like us to do this, with the Bureau of Securities and Regulation. We're talking about this fact-intensive inquiry that comes down to money and will vary among municipalities. And the state cannot do this. Well, Mr. Mackinson needs to do this, and if so, we'll provide uh, um, 
your legal efforts to make sure that this firm does do that. Because they solicited the business, and we want to know. And if we were aggrieved, and if other firms that came in here didn't lose seven, six, seven hundred thousand dollars this summer, that's our money. That's our money, and that's a loss, and that's real money. And if other firms that came in here can demonstrate a portfolio that didn't lose money this summer, someone owes us six or seven hundred thousand dollars, whatever those losses were that were reported in the Hampton Union. Finally, um, Mr. Mackinson is is again, he's being paid overtime. The town of Hampton, from which he steered from another vendor business to his firm, is an elected official. And I've been doing this a long time. And when I'm done, uh, when I'm 60, which is two and a half years, 41 years, I've never seen this. Never, never served the people doing this. Steered the business to himself. This is about 15% of the Mackinson Company's gross book. We are a significant, significant part of that book. And Mr. Mackinson, through his purchase contract, through his continuation as a board of director, and, and for those that don't know, a board of director runs a company. They can hire and fire chief executives. I don't know who else is a dir director. Um, would be interested in knowing when he will um, not be a, a director. Um, and we would be interested to know exactly how much he's being paid. Because it is a government contract. And it's with a public entity. And we want to know how much Mr. Mackinson has made from this fraud is stated by the New Hampshire Charitable Trust and the United States Government Security and Exchange Commission. So it goes on and on, and I'm going to wrap it up. And I said I wouldn't say anything more until I came back from Concord, but I think there's a bunch of stuff there, and you can maybe recapitulate what I just said. But um, uh, there's the, if you're doing business in town, we need to, we need to, do our, our RFP, and we need to do that immediately, and I don't expect you to do it tonight. But uh, if you're convicted or, or you're fine for fraud and this, this caliber of behavior happens, you're not doing business, at least on my watch, uh, in the town of Hampton. Not, not with $21 million. Uh, and there were, there, were, there were several other things. If you can write those down and get back with the board, and this will be, again, an ongoing um, uh, challenge to the board. And uh, I, I will say directly to Mr. Silberdick, uh, based on this shadow uh, and this, this dark cloaking of information from the public, his meetings need to be televised, his minutes need to be up to speed, he needs to be more forthcoming with the people of this town, or he needs to resign. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddell. Yeah. Mr. Bean covered everything, I think. But uh, my question is, the third, the fourth paragraph there, in light of the san and sanctions, trustees do have a fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility to review their investment relationship with Mackinson and Company. And I think that's an important statement. I think when they were in here that night that we had the meeting, it was stated that Mr. Mackinson had nothing to do with the company anymore. I think that, I, I could be wrong, but if no, that was back sad. and check it, it was stated that he had nothing to do with the company. Now through this letter, we find out that he's on the board of directors. So I think that raises a huge question mark. And in my mind, as I stated the last time, I just don't understand with this huge question mark why they just don't switch to a different firm. I mean, there are a lot of firms that do business that can give you the same investment return that they're getting with Mackinson and Company. I just think... There are too many questions, and I, I agree that if, if somebody has been charged with fraud or a company has been charged with fraud, I don't think we should be doing business with that company. I think that's – I just – I don't understand. I don't understand why this letter wasn't made public by the Board of Trustees. If this letter was sent from the AG, from the Attorney General's office, why it wasn't made public. I mean, I had a lot of uh, – trust in what they said that night when they were in here. I mean, they're elected officials. They're an elected board. I had a lot of trust what they said. But what they said is not what's said in the letter here. That, that raises a lot of questions. I would like to say that the Board of Selectmen has been beat up and accused many times of lack of re transparency, a lot of it from the questions that we have asked. Our questions have been answered by this letter, and we have been transparent. That. As a, as a board of five elected officials, the trustees of the trust funds, I have, 
I feel that they will do the right thing. I have full confidence in the elected members of the trustees of the fund, and I think as five, a group of five will get a good answer out of these people. Uh, so I, it's not that I don't have confidence. I do have confidence in them. Um, you know, and there are 29 other towns that have had these same problems, and I'd like to know if there's any way that you can find out um, what is the result of the other 29 towns, Mark, so that we could just use that as a, a, a marker to see where we um, fit in. Um, I think because times have been good, it's unlikely that many of these towns have lost any money. Um, and if times weren't good, uh, maybe this would be a class action lawsuit. But I think times have been good, and you know, maybe it's not the case. But we'll have to, you know, maybe we can find out some more information. Personally, I do have confidence in the board, and there are five people, and they should serve the town well in the end. Any other comments? Moving on.